Hello and welcome to the next update of my top 25 LOL Esports Power Rankings. Um, on the board you will see rankings made by the Discord. I had some monkey in my comments last time want me to address my power rankings that were on the board. Um, they aren't mine, so if that monkey returns, back to your cage. Um, now, Discord votes, that's what's on the board right now. And then I'm going to throw mine on there. Uh, nine people participated. Uh, majority LCK fans, followed by LCS, LPL, and then um, a couple LEC and uh, minor region fans. They also voted for uh, Cloud9, OMG, Fear X, Team Wales, Frank Esports, Team Liquid, LGD, Team Secret, Dignitas, NRG, Nongshim, and SK Gaming. Uh, most votes to least votes. So that's the Discord. Uh, nine people participate. If you'd like to join the Discord and participate in the next one, do so. I'll probably open up the thread and then guess on which day I want to. Um, do my next power ranking video and, and you can participate and update as you go along My top 25 from last week um, three teams are out PSG cloud 9 and RNG so 25th um, to start us off our BDS Since uh, the 9th we've had a lot happen to BDS. They dropped eight spots. They lost to G2 which is to be expected, I think. Uh, but then lost to Mad Lions Koi. Mad Lions went on quite a run. Um, Got to give them their credit. You know, I had uh, a lot of people think that I disliked Mad. Um, but I actually re-watched my preview video. And then I realized why I ended up treating the Mad Lions fans like I did. Um, based on the comment section. So, um, Mad performed that weekend. BDS have issues. Adam being benched, um, you know, people can come to his defense, this, that, or the, or the third. Um, the mentalities that they have, I don't know if they're really conducive to, to get the job done. So um, they have a lot of work to do internally um, for success externally. Excuse me, 24th, Team Secret not moving at all. Um, TS beat. Team Flash, GAM Esports, and Vikings Esports. Vikings Esports, formerly Saigon Buffalo. They have uh, Shogun, who I can't sing the praises enough. Um, but beating GAM is a significant win. Um, GAM, you know, not to spoil, are still above them. Um, but at the same time, that's because I've seen GAM in best of fives internationally. Well, best of threes, um, where I have not seen Team Secrets players. So um, I guess they're just screwed in that regard. Um Dropping my markers. Okay, now. Uh, 23rd, Fnatic dropping uh, six spots themselves. Lost to G2 Mad Lions Koi as well. Not a great situation. So, um, I expected more out of them. Um, I expected more out of Razork and, and, and Humanoid. And they just didn't get the job done. And it's it's unfortunate. Um, but long term, I still think Fnatic are a world's contending team when it comes to going to worlds. Not winning it, not winning it, but um, going. Um, Discord, CFO, RNG, and GAM all had uh, five votes. So they are um, on the board here, 23rd through, through 25th from the Discord out of the, well, what, six actually? So nine, eight, seven, six, six out of nine um, votes. Next, 22nd, CFO Flying Oyster. So they are the only PCS team on the board moving up one spot. Um, they have been to international events in the past. Um, now, with this roster, it's definitely a lot better, right? Um, this, this roster is stacked. PSG, Frank Esports, Beyond Gaming. They beat probably the three best teams in um, the PCS. Which, in my opinion, uh, honestly, they could have even be higher. I know some, a couple people had them in the teens in the Discord. I think maybe all the way up to 25th place. So, CFO 22nd. Um, next, KDF dropping 11 spots. So, they went on that rise, and now they're coming back down to earth. Uh, this past week, very disappointing. Um, they lost to Bro, Bro I mean twice. And if you are new to the channel, I'm not a big fan of Breon. Um, in the style which they play. I couldn't believe there was a 45-kill game in Game 3 today. Uh, that's insane. 
um, for them. But nevertheless, DRX, FearX, two wins for KDF. They're still clearly a top six team in the LCK, so so they're 21st. Um, I shouldn't have put the orange away. GAM Esports, 20th. Um, when push comes to shove, I, I think highly of GAM. Um, now mid jung uh, sorry uh, mid 80 carry two players that I haven't seen internationally I don't think they've had an opportunity um, but at the same time I am looking forward to that if they can get there at MSI uh, beat uh, Rogue Warriors Rainbow Warriors I forget what the team's name is um, and Team Wales lost to Team Secret as we said 19th LNG dropping 11 spots as they had a terrible week. Um, right now, they're performing like the 11th best team based on schedule. Um, I, I looked did some interesting number crunching, and uh, LNG are performing like the 11th best team, but um, I think that they're better than some of the teams that were above them. Nevertheless, lost FPX, top esports, NIP. Um, FPX have been on a bit of a rise, so actually we'll just add them here, 18th. New to the top 25, um, so FPX beat LNG. LNG lost to Top Esports and Nip. To, that clearly said they are not at that level. They're swapping out supports, going with Hung now instead of Mark, who was their support last year. Um, and we'll see if over time, after getting some scrims under their belt uh, with Weiwei and, and Hung, that things can get better. Scout is struggling. Zika is, is performing, I guess, like their best player, and that's not a great situation. FPX, like I said, beat LNG, LGD, and then beat Top Esports today. Now, I'm not putting them much higher than that because they do have some ugly losses on the year. Um, and at the same time, the manner in which they beat Top was good for them. I mean, they beat them on a backdoor in Game 3, uh, so they out macroed them. A young team, Milky Way, is looking excellent in the jungle. Maybe rookie of um, all four regions right now. He and Zhao Feng are playing excellent. Um, but... Top Esports also kind of threw that one, and I don't know how much FPX um, were in a truly winning position. I think they were, I mean, I think like Top had Soul Point or something and uh, threw it. So, uh, you know, that um, is a thing. Uh, we'll see how they do in their next series. 17th Mad Lions Koi in the top 25. Um, there is something to be said for uh, them taking one game against G2 after going on a run there, beating Vitality and then Fnatic and BDS in two best of fives. Um, BDS without Adam does nerf them a little bit. I think Gen X is more than competent, but at the same time, it is a change that BDS probably did not really um, anticipate a few days earlier than that um, before they announced it. And But Mad Lions do take a game off of G2, and then G2 say, okay, we're done here. Uh, Mad were very competitive. Um, and Mad have very interesting picks that I believe personally have, um, you know, viability internationally. I think that that doesn't mean they're going to win worlds or MSI. I think that'd be, um, insane, but, um, they have that X factor of Mirwin and top lane that provides them with, um, you know, potential to, to, you know, get an upset win here or there or be co more competitive than anticipated. Um, 16th fly quest. I didn't move them at all. Now, they lost a Shopify Rebellion, and that's terrible. Um, beat Immortals, whatever. Uh, the reason why I have them there, I'm just thinking in a best of five, I still would prefer Bwipo Inspired over Mirwin El Yoya. El Yoya is excellent. Um, but Inspired, I think, is better than El Yoya. And if you can get a jungler better than El Yoya, I believe that you can kind of slow Mad Lions down. Uh, Masu and Busio have X Factor picks in bot lane, which I think, you know, helps um, into a team like Mad. Um, and Jensen into Frescawi, I think that's kind of a neutralizing matchup. So that's kind of why I have Fly above Mad Lions Koi. Because hypothetically, this is a best of five scenario. And Fly are playing best of ones, right? We haven't seen them in a best of five. Um, so we can only just assume. Uh, next, Weibo dropping six spots. Beat Ultra Prime. That's whatever. Um, lost to OMG uh, yesterday. So that leaves a little bit to be desired. Speaking of OMG, they're in the top 25 and 14th. Um, so, uh, OMG beat Weibo, 
Angel looking good. Abel looking good in the bot lane. Cube dominating games two and three. Um, and uh, OMG also beat Rare Adam. Lost to Anyone's Legend. So, um, to, to kind of segue, Anyone's Legend is one above them. And the thing is with the LPL and why I actually did um, a little bit of number crunching to try and figure this out. There are a lot of teams very close together, right, in the standings. And it was a matter of, okay, what, how valuable are these wins? How hurtful are these losses? And um, this is kind of how it turned out. Um, except LNG, I leapfrogged um, a, a couple teams. So, I think anyone, like anyone's legend is slightly better than OMG, who's slightly better than Weibo right now. Um, you know, Light and Crisp are not doing enough. Um, some games are okay, and then some games it's like, what are we doing? Um, anyone's legend lost to EDG. That's disgusting. EDG bringing out Monkey for his first series, and anyone's legend get 2-0. Shanks looked super good too, and it's unfortunate they lost. He had like 17 kills between two games. Um, and, and, and like Weibo, Zhao who led them in damage against OMG, but he went, had like four kills at 12 deaths or something. It's just a disaster, those three teams. Um, well, OMG, I guess, well, it's just not great. It's just not great. You know, they all have losses that kind of make you go, oh, okay. Um, anyone's legend losing to a worse team than OMG and Weibo, but anyone's legend beat OMG, who beat Weibo. A disaster. Uh, Discord. So, um, 14th and on. Like I said, these guys had six votes. Uh, Fnatic, Anyone's Legend had seven. And then Weibo, D+, LNG, FPX, Mad Lions, Koi, BDS, and 100 Thieves had eight of nine votes. And then the rest are going to be the teams that were um, nine of nine that were represented on every um, everybody's uh, ballot, if you will. Uh, Team Wee, 12th place. Um, they move up. Eight spots as well. Beat EDG and beat IG yesterday. A significant win. Uh, they have stay in the lineup instead of Prince, and they have not missed a beat. Stay has looked solid, um, to, to say the very least. And, and there is potential there for we to continue to uh, improve because they have young players on the rift. Wayward has done his job in top lane, and Fofo is still dealing a ton of damage. One of the, I say it all the time, whenever I talk about him, he probably is the most underrated Azir in the world. Um, the amount of damage he's dealt over the years compared to everybody else. Like people, I know in the Discord we want to say, well, Azir always deals a lot of damage. It's like, okay, but who deals some of the most? And it is actually Fofo. So um, something interesting to talk about. And then, like I said, they're also a team that you could say could lose at any time to the teams below them. 11th, D+, plus, moving up four spots. So um, three and one. Beat DRX twice, should do that. Um, beat FearX, clearly showing they're still a top six team, lost to T1. I don't expect D-plus to be um, competitive with T1 right now. Lucid, um, looking good. Got to give him his flowers. I think he's um, against Sponge. He was clearly the better jungler in both games. And against Willer, he performed. Um, so, excuse me, 11 for D-plus. Moving up one spot, KT 10th place. Um, so KT in 10th, uh, beat Gen G significant win after their, uh, uh, time off beat Nongshim, then lost HLE T1. So clearly, um, still not quite at that level, right? You know, you got T1, Gen G, HLE vying in the top five to six spots in the power rankings and KT not able to have a winning record against them. So, um, KT 10th place. Ninth, G2, and this is, um, you know, I know that I'm not the only one that thinks this, which is good. I, you know, other people are on the same page here. Shoot. Um, they're going to be scrimming now for the next three months, as far as I'm, not three months, geez. Uh, well, it's still February, so when does, when is MSI? May. So let's go a month and a half. Um, so half of that. Uh, beat BDS, Mad Lions, Koi. They have nothing to play for now. They're going to MSI. Why care? Um, now, should they... Last year, I actually advocated that they should have went to Korea and boot camped for months and started a r roster of randoms or anybody they wanted. I think I've even... Not even randoms, but I suggested even giving, um, you know, opportunity to some players. But at the same time, um, they didn't. 
and they were very competitive in that split, but they were trying a lot of different compositions and, and things of that nature. A lot of people want to say, well, G2 should be playing things that are more um, meta. They need to be able to play meta at international events. And as far as I'm concerned, um, no Western team has the hands of an Eastern team. So if you want to beat an Eastern team, you need to not play their game. Otherwise, you will lose at their game. So um, G2, scrim your face off all you want. You're probably not dropping out of ninth place um, until MSI at worst. Uh, eighth, um, IG, moving up four spots. Despite losing to Team Wii, they had a significant win Significant win against BLG after the break. And it was after the break. So, I'm taking a deep breath when I think about this. Um, eighth, beat LGD as well. That's a team that they could have tripped over. And they almost did. Um, only beating them 2-1 today. So, Lan is in the lineup. This is not the same team as the last power rankings when it comes to IG. Lan is an upgrade over Tianjin. Um, very different jungler. This offers a very different look to IG. Tianzhen really played a lot of facilitator junglers in the first three weeks of the season. And Lan is anything but a facilitator at heart. He's known as a Nidalee and Kindred player, similar to that of, of Shun before Shun even was a thing. So um, Lan is, is going to give them a vibe that um, is different. Seventh, top esports. Uh, went two and one this past week, dropped three spots. Like I said, lost to FPX. That was an ugly loss. I did not like that. Game two, they also got steamrolled. Um, RNG and LNG wins. Significant, right? RNG have good players in all five roles. Um, against top, it was LP instead of LWX. I think LP should have gotten a longer look, and that's why RNG are out of the top 25, anyways. Um, LNG, that's a win they should have. LNG are not performing well and top punish them. Losing to FPX, not great. You don't want to see that. Um, next is HLE, not moving at all. Um, HLE, not moving at all. Uh, beat Bro, KT, Nongshim. Uh, beating KT is, is a significant one, right? We, we want them to beat a team near their level. Beating Bro and Nongshim, though, that's easy. Losing to Gen G, still below Gen. Uh, and the thing is, HLE are not going to um, really like out team. Well, you could argue they win the one team fight, but they're not a very aggressive team. They're going to slowly beat you down. So, you know, they're going to. I have them above top esports essentially because of that. Like, tops macro today, HLE beat them. If they play like that. Nip. Uh, up two spots. Fifth place. And actually, based on their schedule, Nip are the best performing team when you value their wins and losses. Um, LPL-wise, even better than BLG. Um, but nevertheless, because their losses to JDG or BLG is against this IG. Um, and Nip has played stronger opponents than BLG over the aggregate. Nevertheless, Ultra Prime, EDG, LNG. Three wins. Nip are clearly... Um, cruising i've been saying this a little while now this week um they remind me of lng last year they're the lck representative in the lpl um playing a very slow style that wins games because they out macro you and they have really good hands um so the fact of the matter is um this team in my opinion could go to an international event um will they do better than the lck remains to be seen rookies look very good um but at the same time um It's, uh, you know, there's limitations there, right? They're not winning based on aggression necessarily. Fourth, JDG moving up one spot. So beat LGD, that's whatever. Lost to BLG 2-1. to one. Ruler was the best player in that series and, and fell short. Um, I still think JDG have the potential to win it all. Um, and at the same time, BLG beat them. So JDG are fourth. Uh, third, Gen G. Um, beat HLE, DRX, FearX, lost to KT, right? So the first series after break, they lose to KT. They don't repeat that performance in their next series. So as far as I'm concerned, it was a one-off. Um, they do drop one though, because, um, T1 did play 
and, and, and did better. Um, so with that in mind, I mean, Genji, like I said about, just said about JG, Genji could still win. Second, BLG dropping one spot. Um, lost to IG, beat JDG. I could say the same thing about Genji, just, you know, it's the same deal, actually. Just, you lost one series after break, and then you return to form the next one. So, with that in mind, I'm not going to punish them all that much. I mean, a lot of people want to blow one series out of, out of proportion. I think that that's uh, silly. Um, you know, it's just, it's, it's really silly. So, BLG second, first, T1. Um, so, they're going to leapfrog both. Um, I don't think it's crazy to just say, hey, you both lost one. I'm not dropping them below IG or, 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 or below KT. I think that'd be, you know, they're not at the same level. Um, and in the end, though, T1 beat D plus and, and beat KT, two teams that are not, no slouch. You have to perform to beat them, and they did, and then beat Firex and Nongshim as well. So T1, once again, first in the power rankings. Um, after winning Worlds, I had BLG first. Um, with the current roster, so T1 back back on top. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter. Join the Discord. Become a YouTube supporter. And I hope to see you again tomorrow.